All right, so what I'm literally doing is just playing this video and uh, talking about it at the same time. So here we've got a four by four uh, linear equation, four equations, four unknowns, and I've already written out the, uh, uh, the augmented matrix. What's the first thing we want? We want a one in the upper left corner. And there are pretty much two ways of doing this. You can swap two rows, or you can divide by uh, uh, you know, the first entry in the row. Here we don't have a one uh, anywhere in the left column. So we're gonna divide by the, uh, the first number in the top row. I've set things up so that you can divide everything evenly by uh, negative three. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that. And while I'm writing out the rest of the rows, um, let's remember why we're doing this. We're trying to get this into reduced form, which means that we want that every row, uh, the first non-zero entry that we hit, the leading entry should be a one. So for the top row, the leading entry has got to be a one. There we go. So we made it a one. Below this, everything is going to have to be a zero. Why does that look all funny? Anyways, okay. Uh, so below this, there's going to have to be a zero. Um, and uh, what else? I'm quitting something. Okay. Uh, I'm quitting something else. Okay. There we go. So we want zeros below this one because that's part of being reduced. So to do that, we're going to add a multiple of the first row to each of the other rows. What multiple? Well, we look at the entry that we would like to turn into a zero, say two. And so we add negative two times row one to row two to get rid of that two. Negative three times row one to row three to get rid of that three. Two, then, which is the negative of negative two uh, times row one to row four to get rid of, uh, excuse me, row one to row four. Uh, to get rid of that negative two, because uh, and, and what this gives us, you know, I encourage you to check the arithmetic. This will give us zeros below that leading one. Um, now we want the one in the upper left hand corner because we remember that we want our ones to go down and to the right. So the very first the leftmost one over the entire matrix had better appear in the highest row that it possibly can, the top row. Uh, you know, the, the leftmost one should always appear in the top row. So now we've got this, check the arithmetic, uh, but what we get now is uh, basically repeating all the processes that we've already done, except we're going to ignore the first row. And as you see, I'm going to write ignore here, I-G-N-O-R, uh, I don't have space for that. Let's see, how can I write that? Oh, at a diagonal, okay. So we're gonna ignore that very top row. We're gonna look for the first non-zero column, which uh, uh, is zero, three, one, and we want to get a one at the top of it so that it looks like you know, reduced row, uh, uh, reduced form. But we've got a zero there. You know, we could either flip or divide, but I can't divide by zero, so there's really only one thing for me to do. Well, I've got a one in the bottom row as its very first entry in that column. So what I'm going to do then is I am going to swap rows two and row four. Row four, okay, sometimes this gets a little hiccupy. Sorry about that. So what we get when we do that is something that looks a little bit like this. Um, the old fourth row becomes the new second row. The third row remains the same, and the old second row becomes the new third row, a uh, fourth row. I need to learn to count. Okay, draw my matrix box. Clearly I have some sort of problems with uh, my graphics or the you know whatever I'm using to write all this out um, great so now I've got a one 
is the first entry in the second row of the first non-zero entry, so I want zeros above and below it to make this reduced. Uh, the bottom row is cool because there's already a zero there. Cool. So we only have to worry about the third, uh, the first and the third rows. And since I've got a negative three in the top row, to get rid of that, I need to add three times the second row to the first row. And since I've got a three uh, in the third row, I'm going to add negative three times row two to row three. Okay. And when I do this, this is the result. Note that the first row, or the first column rather, doesn't change when we do this. It sticks as one, zero, zero, zero. That's part of the beauty of uh, this algorithm, is that once you get a row with, uh, excuse me, a column which has a one someplace and zeros above and below, when you keep repeating the algorithm, that column is not going to change. Because when I do any sort of swapping, or dividing, I'm only going to deal with the rows that are below that, that will not affect the zeros that are there. Uh, and any time that I add or subtract anything, uh, by virtue of the zeros that are below those ones, it's, it's not going to change those zeros and ones. So once again, we're going to ignore the rows that already have leading ones with the zeros above and below, and we want to get in the first non-zero column of the last two rows, we want to get a one at the top. And I've got a two at the top and a one at the bottom, and what makes the most sense to do there then is to uh, 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 is to swap rows three and four. All right, let's do it. Pick up, pick up, pick up. All right, here we go. I'm doing it. Great. Now my old row four is my new row three. My old row three is now my new row four. And my matrix looks something like this. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Dink, dunk, dink, blah, blah, thing, go. Uh, do it. Yeah. Okay. Now we have a leading one in the third row. We want to get zeros above it and below it. And this is the same game as before. The first row is cool because I have a zero above the one. I only have to worry about the second row and the fourth row. So I'm going to add two times uh, row three to row two to get rid of that negative two. And I'm going to add negative two times row three to, I make an error here, row, I write row two, but I mean row four. So I add negative two row three to row four to get rid of that two. Again, notice each time like I'm bringing in another mouse. This negative two gives me a two here. This two gives me a negative two here. Ah, uh, I got a new tablet, and it will make things look a lot nicer. I was testing it out, and it, it just works so much better. So uh, my handwriting should drastically improve. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, did that. Now we've got ones, leading ones in the first three rows, and we've got zeros above and below. So we can ignore those guys and just focus on the last row. I call this the first non-zero column, but it's really just the first non-zero entry. I want every row to have one as the first entry. So I need to turn this three into a one. There's no swapping to be done because there are no rows for me to work with except for the bottom row right now because I'm ignoring all the other rows for the time being. The only thing for me to do is divide. But I've made things work out fairly nicely. I can divide the bottom, row four, by three. And what do I get? Nah, blah, 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 junk, blah, stuff, etc. 
thing, thing, one, and that one. John, come on, fix that up. Professor Bright, fix it. Great, looking better. Negative two, negative two, zero, 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 one, one. I'm gonna draw my lines, I'm drawing them uh, down and over. Let's fix that negative in front of that three. It looks a little bit short. No, wait, I guess I didn't do that. My bad. Okay, so I want zeros above this one that I just put there. So to get rid of the two in row one, I'll add negative two times row four to row one. That's a common mistake that this current palette, tablet palette makes is it's hard to write the letter of the number four. I'm just gonna add row four to row two because one plus negative one is zero. I'm gonna add two to, uh, times row four to row three because the negative of negative two is two. And what do I get when I do that? Well, at this point, I'm just gonna have, you know, to the left of the bar, just ones and zeros. Ones going down the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else because that's what this Gaussian elimination algorithm does for us. So now we're just left with this matrix and I would like you to spend a moment to check that this is indeed reduced. Check it. All right, check it. Okay. Erase, 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 erase. Erase it, erasing it. Okay. And when it's reduced, then we can immediately get a reduced system. The columns correspond to the unknowns x1, x2, x3, x4. And so when I write out the corresponding system, I just get x1 is 3, x2 is negative 2, x3 is 0, and x4 is equal to 1. Okay. So this one works out nicely. That's a good idea, though, for you to go back to the original system and actually check that this is a solution. So check your answer. Good idea to do so. And to check it, you'll just plug it into the original equation and see if it makes them true. The original equations, but I'm going to leave that as an exercise. But believe you me, that it works. That says out. It works out. Okay. Now, for some reason, I decided to write this. Holy calamity. Scream. Insanity. That doesn't look like an eye. Fix it. Fix it. Yeah, erase that. Erase it. Uh, okay, that's enough. Holy calamity, scream insanity. We did it. One bonus point on the test. What song does Holy Calamity, Scream Insanity come from? The lyric. And who did the song? What year is it from? Here's a happy face for you. In fact, it's not just any happy face. This is how you should feel right now for succeeding in doing this problem with me.